Yes. There you go, folks. Here's your answer. I've always thought life is a simulation. Even as a joke, the idea always intrigued me. What if everything we are experiencing is genuinely a figment of our imagination, if you will? As I've said in other videos, when you're dreaming, you usually aren't aware. So who's to say, hypothetically, we aren't all dreaming right now? Really gets you thinking, doesn't it? But you guys weren't ready to toss those thinking caps on today, were you, huh? No, you weren't. Well, your boy is always switching it up. Your boy Pepper is always keeping it spicy, baby. Let's go. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking, do we live in a simulation? And as Joey Diaz says, buckle up, because we're about to go deep. Yep. The posters are going deep. <laughs> All right, for starters, we need to briefly go over the idea of simulation theory, which I will say it's very difficult to even understand or comprehend, but very fun. From Are You Living in a Computer Simulation, published in 2003 by philosopher Nick Bostrom, he said, I quote, Many works of science fiction, as well as some forecasts by serious technologists and futurologists, predicts that enormous amounts of computing power will be available in the future. Let us suppose for a moment that these predictions are correct. One thing that later generations might do with their super powerful computers is run detailed simulations of their forebears or of people like their forebears. Because their computers would be so powerful, they could run a great many such simulations. Suppose that these simulated people are conscious, as they would be if the simulations were sufficiently fine-grained and if a certain quite widely accepted position in the philosophy of mind is correct. Then it could be the case that the vast majority of minds like ours do not belong to the original race, but rather to people simulated by the advanced descendants of an original race. Now, if you weren't able to decipher what Bostrom explained, I'll simplify it. With the way our tech has advanced, and with projections of how it will continue to advance, who's to say we aren't actually a part of some advanced technological simulation, where said technology is so advanced, even those within the simulation feel as though they are fully conscious and in control of their actions. In the case of this theory, we would be those simulations that feel fully conscious, but are actually being controlled by said simulation. Some really weird stuff. So like right now, I think I'm in control of making this video, but it's the simulation that the character of Jared is just a guy that makes videos. It's like, it hurts to think about. It hurts my head. However, there is more to this conclusion. I mean, it's a few pages long, but I'm really trying to simplify it here. Nick Bostrom concludes, I quote, It is then possible to argue that, if this were the case, we would be rational to think that we are likely among the simulated minds rather than among the original biological ones. Therefore, if we don't think that we are currently living in a simulation, we are not entitled to believe that we will have descendants who will run lots of such simulations of their forebears. So he wraps up pretty much saying, if we don't think we're currently in a simulation, then how can we fathom the idea of it being possible in the near future? Now, when you put it that way, well, I mean, Nick, you kind of got a point here, buddy. <laughs> And over the years, as previously mentioned, this has been quite a topic of debate among many in the scientific community. Some are certain that we don't, others are certain that we do, and then some like Nick who think, well, what if? A few others have offered their opinions, suggesting it may very well be possible that we do live in a simulation, although there's no way of knowing for sure, including the great astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, and of course, the one and only Elon Musk. Others have dismissed the idea, such as physicist Frank Wilczek, who argued that the idea of building such a complex simulation just wouldn't make any sense. More specifically, when pointing to the extreme complexities of our world, such as the minute things that really don't make all that much of a difference, it's too specific to be in a simulation. Asking the question with another question, Frank here is in the camp of, why would an intelligent species waste so much time and energy creating such a complex simulation when it wouldn't need to be as detailed? And the answer to that, my friends, could be depending on what the simulation is being used for. Too bad I don't have Frank's number. I would love to give the guy a call and just let him know. Of course, aside from those who are for, against, or unsure about whether or not we're actually living in a simulation, you have those who argue there is no true answer. Sabine Hassenfelder, a physicist and scientific blogger, made the point that since there is no true way of proving or disproving whether or not we're currently living in a simulation, then there's no reason to ask the question in the first place. If you know there's no way of knowing for sure, why ask? I mean, again, fair, but there's a reason people know Elon and Neil deGrasse Tyson and not these other people. They think life's a simulation. Me too. We're just a bunch of bros just broing out because life is a simulation, bro. It seems across the board within the scientific community, this idea that we live in a simulation is somewhat divided, like 50-50. On one end, you have people arguing that if we were a part of a simulation, we likely wouldn't know. And on the other side, well, as you see people saying, it's far too complex to be a simulation because why would people put that much work into something that isn't real? The people who don't think about it or don't bother to question it in the first place, they're not included here. Just those for or against the idea. If you don't think about it, then just figure out which side you're on. And unfortunately, because there will never be a way of confirming 100% as to what life really is, this becomes an open-ended question. 
Similar to the idea of who created the creator, the answer to both that question and this one likely depends on the individual pondering it. For me personally, I've joked with the idea that life is a simulation. With all that's gone on, including unfathomable things and miracles that logic simply can't explain, well, I mean, simulation confirmed, right? Maybe not. As humans, we tend to think we're much smarter than we actually are. And this idea of us not being able to comprehend how something happens, so we refer to it as a miracle or the work of the unknown, is simply our egos getting in the way saying, well, we can't understand it, so no one ever will, and thus, it's the work of an external being. Really? Come on, I mean, that sounds a little lazy to me. Bringing us back to the idea of potentially being in a simulation, well, it seems like many other miracles or unexplainable things that we've as a society and species have experienced, I don't think we'll ever have an answer to this one. Over the years, people will likely work tirelessly, spending days and hours trying to come up with a concrete answer to this pondering question. But all in all, it seems the human mind is usually the first to give out, or at least give up, when faced with such a mind-bending question. Some rocks are better left unturned, and the idea that life being a simulation may be just that, because although we can't ever fully confirm, if collectively we all agreed life was a simulation, and then somehow tried to take control of that, well who knows what happens. For example, imagine you're playing a game of Sims on the computer, and the characters start to take a life of their own, walking, doing tasks, and creating things without you commanding them to. You'd probably just unplug the computer, right? Well who's to say whoever's controlling us wouldn't do the same? Gets you thinking. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. Hopefully Jerry's final thought there gave you guys all something to think about. For now, let's do some common replies from the video. Did we find a new dinosaur? And hopefully you guys get the joke about Jerry's final thought if you ever watched Springer. Terminator156 said, what if wild animals had human intelligence? I was thinking about that the other day and I genuinely think humans, or sorry, I genuinely think animals are much smarter than we let them out to be. We think we're the smartest of it all because of what we've created that works for us. But at the end of the day, like, if we're in the wild, a lot of humans can't fend for themselves or live. So we're, we only know what we know. We can't live off the land the way animals do because they're natural and we're not. We've made all these things like a house. You know, we've made, we've made these things to make life more livable. They've just figured it out. That's all I'm saying. I guess we've figured it out too. That is kind of the point. The point I'm making though is like, you know, if you give me wood, I can't build a house. You give an animal, you know, the wild, they'll find some place to stay. You get what I'm saying? Your killer said, hell yeah, science. Ha ha ha. Oh, you guys. I don't know if you guys watch Inform Overload, the weekly roundup, I always cover sports and science every Friday at 4 p.m. And you guys know I get jacked up about science. I love this stuff. It gets you thinking, baby. You wanna know why? It's science, baby, let's go! Adam's house said every time I see Jared, he has a new look. Cause I'm a chameleon and we're in a simulation. So I just figured why not change it up every day if I can. All right guys, that's all for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronson. We'll see you guys soon.